This is Apostle Dillon Bergen, and I am here just talking again about uh, the experimental injections that they are giving people that have not been fully um, clarified, qu qualified as vaccines. Uh, specifically today, I want to um, talk about this from a, a personal standpoint. I've been I've shared different uh, thoughts about the matter from a, just a general standpoint based on information that I've come across along the way. But now I am, it has hit home personally in that I have two sons. Uh, one of them has gotten, just gotten accepted to a prestigious charter, um, boarding school and they have required that he receive one of these vaccines, these experimental vaccines before entering the school, uh, before beginning. And the other one, we have just been informed that the board of the school, of the program that gave him the scholarship to a prestigious school, another prestigious um, public school, that the board, not the school, but the board of the program that give them the scholarship, give, the, give that older one the scholarship, that the board may be requiring the vaccine because of the boarding arrangement that they have um, for the scholars in that particular program. So it has hit home personally. And I hope that this video helps some of you who are dealing with a similar situation and you have decided that you are not going to let your children take any of these experimental uh, drugs, these experimental injections that are being uh, called vaccines. Here are some of the concerns that uh, actually, before I say the concerns, let me finish the thought about um, options. Here are some of the options for some of you parents who have children that you are looking for schools for them or you, they are going into certain schools or they have gotten accepted into specialized programs and uh, the programs are requiring them to, ha to take one of these experimental vaccines. The options you have are one, to look for some Christian school where they, where they are not accepting or where they are um, resisting these, the imposition of these experimental vaccines. Secondly, homeschooling. And I want you to hear me clearly on the homeschooling piece because many of you are not aware that homeschooling is a very big thing in the United States of America to the extent that um, the statistics have shown that um, by and large, children who are homeschooled tend to be uh, even better adjusted socially um, than, than, than children who go out into these many of these uh, hostile environments at the public schools and so forth. And secondly, the grades um, and the performance at university level has been noted as uh, higher, very high on par with or even higher in many cases than um, other children who attend the traditional school system. So that's something to pay attention to. Uh, let me add here that you could do your own research. You don't have to ask, uh, reach out to me for information or whatever. You could do your own research. Just, just go on, on the internet and, and um, search up through different websites and Google and, and, and so on. You'll, you'll, you'll get leads that would lead you to places because there's a whole big community of homeschoolers that, um, that are supporting each other and there are official systems that are, um, offer very good support for parents who are homeschooling their children. They have curricula or curriculums, if you're American, um, that guide the children into these programs, into doing really well into, uh, in the homeschooling programs. So this is something that is a very, very good option and you should look into it. Now to talk about the actual um, uh, experimental drugs that they're, experimental vaccines that they are using, um, here are some of the concerns and some of the questions you have to raise. Number one is that some of the uh, quote-unquote trusted international organizations like the World Health Organization, for example, are telling you that um, they, are not, they are advising people 
not to give these experimental vaccines to children under 18. Research, um, reports are coming out all over the place, left, right, and center, that uh, many people are experiencing clot, from brain clot to all kind of different clots so in different areas of the body. Uh, recently, I saw a video where there is a report on um, a few pilots who got blood clot in flying, apparently, or, or, or had ex difficulties in flying, and then um, died shortly after in the United States of America. And it was readily, quickly traced to the to blood clots that resulted from um, their having taken these experimental vaccines. So now, a um, couple of the airlines now are advising their pilots to not take the vaccine or to tell them, well, you know, it's not mandatory now, you don't have to take it. I hope a lot of them get sued out of every um, dime they have because of some of this kind of behavior. So what we're saying is that there are a lot of uh, clotting taking place. Some, a lot of young people are showing up with um, palpitation in the heart and other heart conditions. So we have blood issues. We have clotting issues. We have a um, number of other uh, issues. The, div the division that is taking place between those who are for it and those who are not it and are not for it. That's another issue that is happening. So when you look at the whole story, all of the pieces together, what they're saying is that um, there is more than enough concern for people to not give these things to their young children. Some older people have actually heard a couple of older people in their 70s say, listen, man, I have but maybe a few years to live again. So what's the, perp what's the big deal if I take this thing and it doesn't work out? If I die in a few years, I've lived a full life already anyway. Now, that's understandable. And if people want to go that route, so be it. But then those older people who make that decision because they have lived a full life, um, that's, that's fine for them. But why do you want to subject your youngsters to this um, not knowing where it is going to go? And I'm going to close by saying this, that right now my concern is that in a short time from now, and when I say a short time, a year or two, there are going to be so many um, issues. In fact, I'm going to put this a different way. There are going to be so many jobs. There's going to be so much work in another year or two for people who are in psychotherapy, people who are in um, actually many doctors. In fact, many of them may end up opening um, private uh, clinics who before didn't think that they had the courage or resources or they were willing to take the insurance risk to open their own clinics. Many of them might go open their clinics because there will be so much work for them because of the effects of these experimental drugs. When people's organs start to be um, roasted and when this, the body start eating itself and they have to find all kinds of things. I mean, now here they're telling us, listen, there's um, the, another strain of the virus that is coming and it may attack young people. Well, hold on a minute. The previous one was attacking mostly old people. Now this other one may attack mostly younger people. Well, how, have you ever thought of it that how virus is so smart that, it, that one attacks predominantly older people? It's not people who are in a certain condition, just older people. And then the other one attacking predominantly younger people. Well, um, I just see in the handwriting on the wall that somebody is creating something, is tampering with something. I mean, do we have to call this conspiracy theory? So, so here's the thing that you have other strains that are coming, which means that you're going to have to find new experimental vaccines for those new strains. A couple of the companies are saying, you, you may have to get the injection every six months. I think one of them is saying maybe theirs might be every eight months. So now, um, look at this. If you have your young people taking an vac uh, experimental vaccine now, and they would have to take booster shots six months from now, but between now and six months from now, or between now and a year from now, there's a new strain that is attacking them. That means you may have to most likely get a different kind of vaccine or a stronger version of, of some kind of these experimental vaccines. You see what I'm saying? Now, 
Would the one you get after for the new strain react with the one you got for the first, um, the first time around? And then who is to know what was going to happen another year or, um, or six months from that, whether you'll have now another strain of the virus? You see what I'm saying? So how may, uh, are we going to just simply sit and say, all right, listen, man, um, you're pushing me too much. I don't want to think so far down the road. Let me deal with what is before me here and now. Let me deal with the immediate. Really? Do you deal with the immediate with everything else in your life that is important? So why you want to deal with, 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 with these experimental drugs only on an immediate basis and then you, you, you deal with it as you go along? That, does that make sense? I'm Apostle Dylan Bergen and I think I've said enough. Um, think about what I've said. And those of you who are in resistance mode, stay in resistance mode because something is going on and there is something more serious than what is being presented and unless you're paying attention, it's going to be right in front of your face and you would miss it. Because that's the trick of the enemy. God does not like what is going on. It is ugly. It is anti-God. It is, it is against what Christ Jesus died for. It is, it is um, totally in opposition to the work of the Holy Spirit in the lives of people. The Bible says that our bodies are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit dwells in our bodies. Therefore... All of this assault upon the, the body of the human and the forcing of the people, which means now that you're taking the place of God because not even God goes against our will. All of that is wrong. It is immoral. It is unbiblical, unethical, ungodly. And God is going to get somebody for it. Mark, me, mark my words. God is going to get, you all, get them for it. And those who support them, God's going to give you the message and you're going to wake up and say, oh, wow, we didn't know. Well, no, not true. People like myself are saying we know. And even what we don't know, we can sense by the power of the Holy Spirit of God and the spirit of discernment and the, the gift of the discerning of spirits. We know something foul is going on. And we need to stop it and, and we need to resist it. And we need to not make it easy for it to happen. God bless you all.